Hey guys, I'm Alex, and today I want to talk to you about how society grows and changes. Um, so the first thing that we're going to look at is how you can look at society like it's a big equation. Um, and every little part of it is a variable inside of that equation. So you can say we've got like four really, really important variables. Um, so government, education systems, economy, and agriculture to get food to people. Uh, and, and then if each of those are variables, we can change the values and we kind of want to find like the best optimized values for those. So like for, uh, for a government type, it might be democracy. For agriculture, it might be that we have like mass produced food um, or, or a combination uh, where we've got like Part of the system is producing mass-produced food, like with machines, and then you've got like artisan-created food where chefs cook at restaurants, and you've got two types, and that combination is now the answer to that variable. And then if you like break it down into smaller and smaller parts, now within the agricultural system, you don't just have the, well, how is the whole thing done? You have, well, how is the food transported? Who's growing it? Where are those workers getting their jobs from? Uh, things like uh, what kind of environmental factors are there? Where in the world should we be growing this food? What kind of fertilizer should we add to the soil? And you just keep going further and further and further down in detail and you wind up with more and more variables. And it, you can think of it like a tree in the sense that like, say you've got like four big branches and then off of each of those comes these little branches and those are like the smaller details that we just talked about. But society is also something you can look at as a web, where even though we've got like branches over here, like fertilizer for agriculture, it relates back to economy because it's like, well, the type of fertilizer we use is not just a matter of what fertilizer is best, it's a matter of what fertilizer is inexpensive enough that we can afford it. So now that's an economy thing. And it's also what kind of regulations are go, exist on what is inside of fertilizer. So now it's a government thing. And then really it's an education thing too, because you need to be educated on how is best to grow your crops. So these things all fit together. Uh, so we'll say for now, society is this big equation of variables and the ways that we can change it is dependent on how we go about optimizing those variables. Um, and, and something I'll say from the onset is there's no single best solution for a system that has multiple variables, especially ones that are constantly changing. Like we constantly have new laws coming into existence. We're updating textbooks in schools. Uh, we're eating new foods as we get exposed to new cultures. So everything is always changing. The question is, how do we make it change in a direction that is beneficial for us? So we, we can take really two options at, at face value. One is we take big steps and one is we take small steps. And if we're taking small steps, we're talking about like, well, we're going to minorly change things from the way they are to like something closer to the way we think they should be. For example, like there's a, a cookie recipe in your family that's been made for like a generation or, or three generations. And you love the cookies, but you know that they could be a little bit better and you don't want to like throw out the recipe. You love the tradition. So instead, next time you make them, you try and add a little bit more sugar. And then the time after that, you try and add like a little bit more chocolate chips. And every time you change the recipe slightly, and then as you do this, you find the one that works best for you. And then that's your new solution for that variable. And so we can do that. And then we can also isolate this variable. So we're only looking at sugar amounts. For the next four times that I make cookies, we're only changing sugar amounts that variable is isolated and then nothing else has changed. And the next time after those four weeks and we found the best sugar amount, we're going to change the chocolate chip value. And we keep doing this. And then you might find that if you change the chocolate chip value, it actually means that there's a new better value for sugar. And this is something we kind of do all the time, just without realizing it. And, and also in society is we make a bunch of small changes. And when you change one thing, it ripples and affects another thing. And we keep changing and changing and changing and changing until we find something that we're pretty happy with. Uh, and the other option is to take big steps. So instead of like using your grandmother's recipe 
you completely toss it out the window and you decide that you're not even going to use cookies as your tradition, you're going to use, like, you're going to use marshmallows. Like, you're going to make marshmallows from scratch and completely redesign the family tradition. And that's an option too. And what you might find is that your family members like the marshmallows even more than the cookies. So we're just going to stick with marshmallows from here on out. But you had to sacrifice this like steadiness and this known thing to try something unknown that could have a bigger and possibly more positive impact. So that's something that also happens like economically. You have companies that take something like the iPhone and they'll just tweak it and tweak and tweak it. And like every time we get it, the processor is slightly faster, has slightly more battery life. The glass is slightly more durable. But then you have other people like on the entrepreneur side who are like, forget smartphones, we're making holograms. And that's like, that they're gonna redesign the technology altogether. And we stand to gain a lot, but they stand to lose a lot. Like a lot of startups do not succeed. And that's kind of the risk you're taking if you try something completely new, is that people might not like it or you yourself might not be able to use it. So those are the big and small steps. And, And the other thing is there's a bunch of methods to optimize this by, like mathematically and literally like in real life, because you can use things where every single time that you change something, you change it with the, like a confidence of, I know I need to change it by a minimum of this amount. And we can say it's the gradient descent method, which we'll talk a lot more about the math later, but we we're confident we're going in the right direction. So we're going to go that direction really fast. And then we're going to slow down when we think we're around the right answer. Um, or we can just like try guessing and checking and we'll try changing this and then another time we'll try changing that and eventually we'll just have a solution. Uh, but there, there's a number of different mathematical methods to approach this with and they're used in everyday life. Or There's a number of different mathematical methods to approach to use this and we'll find more and more of them as we go on because every part of society requires a different approach. Um, and the other thing is that it's not just what you're trying, but it's how and where you're trying it. So we stand to find a better solution if we try more things. Like that's something we know from statistics is we, we get a better estimate of, of something if we have a larger sample size. If we test more things, we get a more accurate result. So in, in the case of society, it's like, if we're gonna try a policy on a national level, first we should test it out in our community. Then we might wanna scale up, test out the best ones from the community in the cities, and then take the ones that are best in the cities, scale them up to the states, and then from states to national government. Like if we want to implement something in education, like we wanna start teaching fractions, but we wanna do it in second grade instead of third grade, then we'll teach it first, like you can teach it to a local math club or like when you're tutoring kids, you teach them that. And then if that works, you try it at one level higher and you keep scaling it up only when it's been successful and only when it proves to work for that kind of people. Like if I'm doing something in Florida, it might be great for Floridians, but if I try and move it out to Kansas, it might not work for them. So you kind of have to be very conscious of who are you building this for, when, where, why, and how are you building this? And then just keep trying. Like the more data we collect, the more attempts we make, the better the solution we'll get. And the last thing is that we need to keep changing. Like there's no such thing as you optimize something and you're comfortable with it and it's just gonna be okay forever. Uh, we talked a little bit about that before, but even more so, when you reach that point, it's great for those conditions, right? Like the temperature is 65 degrees and the wind is 15 miles an hour and your building is so only so strong, it's great. And then a hurricane comes, all the conditions change and suddenly things are falling apart. 
So you need now a system that matches the new set of conditions. And you want, so to, to reach a point and to stay there and to stagnate literally means that when the next condition comes, which it always is, the whole thing's gonna fall apart. So we need to be flexible and constantly be changing and adapting and looking for a new solution that fits our new circumstances. Fits our new circumstances. fits our new circumstances. So much like the model that we talked about last time, we need to build something that is going to not just be flexible, but literally have interchangeable parts so that when one thing changes, we don't have to redesign society. We just can change out that one variable value and turn the dial on it until it adjusts correctly. And it doesn't have to like, sideswipe everything else in society. We, we want things to work together, but work independently so that they feel the consequences independently. We don't want things to fall apart if we change one part and we're working with another part. Like, society needs to be stable so that we can make changes, but the bigger system won't fall apart all at once. So, uh, that brings us to a close for today, and I'm, I'm really enjoying doing these videos with you guys. So let me know if you have any comments, questions, criticisms down in the comments section, and I'd be happy to answer them. See you all next week.